Hi and welcome. My name is Matt and I'm the founder of the Somatic Consent Academy and Somatic Eros. So the following videos are about the orgasmic blueprint couple retreat that we held in beginning of September in Sweden uh, in life where a group of couples came to explore deeper their erotic and orgasmic potential. So you will learn in the next uh, about 12 sessions how somatic consent and somatic errors uh, opens up your erotic and orgasmic potential. And the following first session is all about how to find the inflow. The very first session of this retreat was about creating a container. What are we going to do? Um, container building, um, one of the breaks, where the bathrooms, where the rooms and so on. That's not so interesting and important. Important is this very first session where we start to explore the sensory inflow. I hope you enjoy and find in this course what you're looking for and uh, let's get right in. Enjoy. What is the orgasmic blueprint? Okay, so um, maybe I start with how I found it and how I explore it and how I discovered that. And some of you know that already, the, the beginning of it, but the end of it is, is, is open. As you said, the, the sky is the limit. And um, the orgasmic blueprint, the way how I discover that and how I experience, starts in each one of us the same way but the way how you go through this blueprint and how you find your different pathways is individually different so so that's the 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 the, the blueprint in itself um, has to be and it is your individual blueprint there is no blueprint like a cookie cutter and one blueprint for all of us the same um, because we use it all differently so um, but where it ends, like that was the, the, what you asked, Gary, it ends all in this place of um, unity, oneness, mm -hmm. infinity. This place of um, uh, soul. And, uh, and, and, and what you said, this thing about meditation and, and, and tantra, this, I had experiences they were, they're, they're not from here and, and when we explore and discover that so it's like we're just looking into each other's eyes just like what was that this uh, what, what what this is not from here what was that so it's like i don't know just like and i can't even explain it anymore yeah one phrase that often comes up is like this is not human <laughs> even though it's the most human thing but it's like it's, it's yeah it feels like this is created something else yeah, yeah. Mm. And kind of to share a little bit about my path and how it all came into being and into life to give you a little bit of, of understanding is I was always thinking I'm a multi-orgasmic man. And I was in my, you know, I started when I was 11 to explore my genitals, my penis. And I started to masturbate and I heard that from other boys around the school and then all of a sudden just like I had an orgasm just like I was hooked from the first day on when I was 11 and I probably masturbated every day twice something like that and then I started to become uh, into puberty when I was about 15 then just like the ejaculation happens and I was like okay now I become a man and, but it has not been changing my um, behavior of, of uh, orgasm or, or masturbating. Sometimes I was ejaculating and masturbating several times a day. And I just got that through my life and started to become, uh, uh, when I was 21, become a father and then kind of sexuality has been changing. So I have three kids 
uh, there are, uh, so my daughter is getting 32 in a week or so, and uh, other son is uh, uh, 30 and uh, an 18 or 19 year old son. So my life changed and sexuality wasn't that kind of uh, uh, prickled anymore because, you know, when you have children, this is a different thing, <laughs> as you know, when you have children. Uh, and um, so, but I always had this feeling, I was always a sexual activated horny person. So, so my energy was always high vibrating and, 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 and I was knowing that about myself. But the only thing that I was knowing is that like, well, I get, need to get when I got turned on, I need to release that. And I just need to get off it. And, um, and my understanding or my idea till I was in 20s that a multi-orgasmic man or as a multi-orgasmic man, I can orgasm and ejaculate as much as I want to. And I had several experiences in my in my twenties, um, um, or in, in in this time before I married, and then in my uh, later time, we had just like 10, 15 orgasms and ejaculations in a row, and I didn't lost my erection. It was just like crazy. I had always this energy, till I was uh, n twenty. I fell in love, and I was madly in love. Kind of just like this thing when when you explain that this this is what happened to me, and um, and with this woman we kind of locked ourselves away. I mean, there's more to the story, but it's not so important at this point. But on the energetic sexual level, we locked ourselves away for a, nearly a week, and we were just like crazy with each other. There was no knowledge about tantra or energy or or spirituality or anything and that we were just like crazy and fucking mm -hmm. and we had so much fun and, and, and I counted it I was ejaculating 25 times in a week and then something really crazy happened my entire system collapsed and I crashed mm -hmm. completely breakdown energetically physically emotionally I got depressed I couldn't sleep I couldn't eat Thoughts about sex were disgusting. I just, well, I, I was gone. I was, my soul was out. I literally fucked my soul out in a way, and um, and I had no idea what was going on. And so I went to a doctor and asked for help, and they referred me to a, a psychiatrist, and they just like gave me psychopharmaca, so the typical way. And then I took that, and it took me three months to recover from that. Yeah? I mean, I'm glad that I took it. Yeah, but that was not one question. So what happened? What was the background emotionally or physically? There wasn't zero, and nobody asked me anything, and and I, and I had no idea. And whenever I was just like thinking about sex and 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 having sex or was watching something, I was just disgusted. So it was really something different. Till um, I just actually ended up one night on a balcony because I was so devastated and, and, and still so down that I wanted to kill myself. And, and, and I, re I remember that staying, standing on this, on this balcony reeling, just like, okay, so it's like, this is useless what I'm doing. Your life is just has no meaning. I can just go. It's just like, if I end it or not, it's just like, who cares? And, um, and I was really in this point, just like, just before you just want to jump. And, and, I crashed, I collapsed and had like an internal, like a smash with a hammer or something where there was like an inside, just check out what is love to you and what is Tantra. And I, I don't know where I've heard Tantra before, but that was there. And, um, and I crashed and, um, and I cried and I had a really breakdown this night. And um, next day, I just went to a, a bookshop that was in 97 or so, so before internet, and you could research anything. I just ask kind of ChatGPT, what is Tantra? <laughs> yeah, it was easy. You do it. And so I went to a bookshop, and, uh, and there were two books, and one of them kind of resonated with me, and I took that, and I started reading, and just like, okay, yes, 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 that's me, okay, yes, 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 and I didn't stop reading, it was just like ongoing, and it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm sold, I'm dedicated, whatever it takes, and I was living this time in Hanover, and, um, and it was just like really tied in 
in different responsibilities. So there was no um, Tantra teacher or mentor or anybody around. I was just on my own. And um, <coughs> asked my wife, this time I was still married, just like, okay, um, I want to practice that. I want to live that. And, and she looked at me and just freaked out and said, just like, I'm not letting any kind of terminology or, or mysticism or, or idea dictate my sexuality. I'm not interested. And, and that was just like, on a soul level, just, it was just clear, bang, just like, okay, this marriage is over and I, I go on a journey. Whatever it takes, I, I do it. And I just took every stone that I could find around and I said, I, I just want to learn from the teacher that really resonate with me. And, and that was where I just went the first time around the world traveling. And um, the first thing was uh, I had uh, a teacher that was Barry Long and a mentor. And some of you might have heard about him. He's he dead already from Barry Australia. Long. Barry Long. I have listened to him so much. Oh. Mm -hmm. I love him. Yeah. So, so that, was my, that was my beginning of literally. So, so he had this book, Making Laugh. That was before it was a book. I just got the script somehow, and and just like, whoa, this is just like, he's he's speaking my words, and so I just started to research, and I met him, and and he became a mentor and a teacher, and and then I just got this other book in my hands from Mantak Chia that just came out about uh, the Tao of sexuality, and some of you might have heard about that was the the the, the big stuff that came out beginning of 2000 and, and I said okay I just want to meet these people I just want to ask them questions I just want to learn that and whatever that is it takes I will do that <coughs> so um, and, and, and this is the story I'm on since this is more than 25 years ago it was 27 years almost ago and, and, and I asked questions and I just like figured it out and first of all I need to say my biggest teacher are not male mentors. My biggest teachers are my lovers. <laughs> the women I was engaging with, because that was the beings I was learning the depth of that, what, what I wanted to explore. And I could not read that in a book, and no male mentor could teach me any of these. Yeah? So that was where the real teaching was coming from. And I, I was dedicated through this experience that I had with my partners, with my lovers, because that was where the real teaching has happened to me. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is a little bit of the story. So, I have started in 20, uh, um, or, or 2000 uh, traveling, and then one important piece I started with uh, a meditation practice, a, a, is um, from Advaita Vedanta, so Ramana Maharashi and the entire lineage. There's a book over there, I just found that from, from, from Papaji, uh, um, um, the, the, uh, the, the lion's roar or the roar of a lion or something like that. So very, and it's just like this, this deep meditative state of presence in the moment. And then I just kind of recognized this is where my experience has guided me so many times, the mysticism of of presence, of, of, of meditation. Um, and then I recognized, but how can I combine that with this tantric path? And I was just like exploring and discovering and trying to figure stuff out and ask questions. And I just went different paths that kind of brought me on different misleading ways that I was trying to understand. And, and I put different stuff together. And then in 2010, that was the first time when it really clicked in for myself. Okay, this is what this tantric thing is. To use the combination of deep love on a soul level with sexuality that is not procreative. And um, um, present moment awareness. What is a procreative uh, lovemaking? Okay, so there are... Four, four different ways of sexual energy we most of the time can encounter with. And the first one is procreation. For what is, uh, making, making children. And the important piece is that this is a very important part of our sexuality because this is where we're all from. And without our parents doing that, we would not be here today. 
and we have some of us have children or all of us not all of us but some of us have children and it's a very sacred space you know and i remember all the three times when the conception with my children happened so i know that it's 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 really high soul energy i'm i'm really connected there yeah and so so um procreation is the first one and then i always ask in my classes or in in, in courses or when i work with couples or individuals just like uh, so do you have children or do you want to have more children and and then most they say well no i have children i'm done my package is delivered so my package is delivered you know now i'm 55 and I'm, I'm not procreating anymore. So I ask then people, and that's a question I would ask then only rhetorically that you need to answer yourself. When you don't want to, chill, want to have children anymore and you're conscious about this dynamics. Or you don't want to have them yet. Or you <laughs> don't want to have them yet. Thank you. Why do you have a sexuality as if you procreate every time? That's not, so it's, it's a serious question but more like as a rhetoric question. So I don't want to ask you this question now. So this is an answer that you need to answer for yourself. Yeah? And then when you are aware of you don't need to procreate any time when you have sex, what are the other three? And this is where it's getting really interesting. And the second one is recreational dynamics. So it's fun, it's play, it's great. If you have to just, you enjoy, <laughs> it's, 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 it's Good vibration, you know, it's, it's, it's playful dynamics. The third one is rejuvenation, yeah, so the path of, of, of yoga. It's healthy, it's, it's, it's good for the body, the cellular structure, you, you know, your emotional system, it's good for the skin and you smile and you, just, you, you look good, you feel good. It's, it's a good vibration. Yeah? And the third one is transformation. And this is where I want to go deeper into the, the pathway of DMT, the, what is called dimethyltryptamine. It's that stuff that we release when we're born and when we die. It's the spiritual molecule. It's this pathway, this, the, the spiritual unity. You know, DMT is in all plants, is in our body, and we release that in our pineal gland. After a certain amount of time, what gives us this mystical experience of life vibrates and resonates in a different way. And this is where it goes when we avoid the procreative dynamic if we don't procreate. And I talk much more about that and go too deeper into that how that works. But that's on a, how that all works on a neurological level and uh, on, a, on a physical level, what that does to the body when we have procreative sex without procreating and what that kind of changes when we when we can adapt that so this was one part yeah so um as an important feature in the to know about why that is so the why question and then and then the how and the how is the most delicious part of that the understanding of the function of the skin and uh, as, as our biggest organ and how we relate with our skin and how we use that. And, and so I had a few experiences in my life where I um, had this kind of sensory, somatic, pleasant experience in my skin, like mystical, magical touch. You just, you, you just touch something and it feels like, like sparks, just like kind of exploding through kind of micro movement through your skin and it feels so beautiful. I guess you know <laughs> what I mean, right? And and I had a few experiences but I could I could not um, uh, reproduce these experiences. I had them but but I could not find the answers how can I access them and how can I use them and how can I make that possible for myself whenever, however, wherever I want to and give that this language and give that this, this um, context. Yeah? So, so this is not like, and I've seen that in Tantra many times, this is just a mysticism, it's a magic. Well, if you can't put a word on that and if you can't put that in a context and explain to it, it's useless to me. Mm -hmm. yeah? so, so that's the reason, okay, 
So when you look into the book, everything in the book has, I think we have probably, and I say we because I've, I've ghostwritten that with, a, with a, another um, friend, we have researched probably 80 scientific stuff to really bring that in. So there are links in the book, uh, specifically in the online version, in the PDF, where you can just click the link and then you just go to the research part and then you can read more in, into the dynamics why and how that all works. So I found these different things and, 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 and I could not find them till um, in 2014 I just went to a somatic training for professionals and practitioners and this thing just clicked in and I found the, I found the language to it. And this is what the orgasmic blueprint is for me to show you how you can unravel that for yourself. Yeah? Does that kind of, the story makes kind of sense mm -hmm. in a way? I've told this story probably 50 times and it's always a little bit different, but this is the way I would tell it. Is there any questions about that? Great question. Yeah. Um, I will draw a picture. It's the easiest way. And, but while we do that, um, I would like to invite you, why we do that, to take just something in your hand. An apple is perfect, or a banana, or whatever it is. Just, just take something. A glass, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the great thing was, when I was in that somatic training, I had a lime in my hand, and I used the lime very often as an explanation. And uh, I still love limes. <laughs> So, so, so everything that I've been doing over these years has been changing by the name a few times. So it started with, um, I called it Unique Tantra in early ages, in 2010. And I did that for a few years and then from Unique Tantra uh, it went into, so when I started this somatic training I went deep into consent and somatic work, I just studied the the nervous system and the polyvagal theory and I went into trauma and trauma therapy and all this kind of stuff to see how we can put that all together in one package. And uh, then I started in, um, uh, in 2017, built it with Betty Martin and my partner, the School of Consent till 2000, no, 2019. And um, saw that there is in this dynamic some shortcomings I might talk about, but that's not so important. And then I just started to call everything somatic consent. Yeah, so this stuff has been working for four years for me, and now I just came back to this passion of this edging part and the orgasmic blueprint and how everything worked and and now I have rephrased everything from somatic er uh, from somatic consent into somatic eros mm -hmm. so the erotic the somatic dynamic of eros and how that all works and being capable of speaking that language when I, when I say it and the great thing about that is when we all know how the language is being spoken we can all talk about it and it's not about any phrases that the teacher in front of you throwing around and then you don't know what he's saying. So you, you could literally, there are reference points to that. And if you have a question, I can repeat that and I can just like nail it down and you can use it and you know what you talk about. So there, this is, is a scientific language behind that. Mm -hmm. That gives you the opportunity to communicate that and not making it woo-woo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's... that's part of that. So, somatic. <clears throat> so you have something in your hand. Yeah? A a another hand or an apple or, <laughs> or you just like have this kind of cloth or whatever there is in your hand. And um, some of you have seen that, my magic hand. That's okay. It's not too. <laughs> this is this is the pinky. This is the pinky, and this is the thumb. <laughs> and this one here, this walnut. This is the brain. Yeah. So so this is one of the most important 
pictures in this entire structure because everything is built on that and whenever I share and talk about that I always come back to this very dynamic yeah. and when this clicks in your nervous system it's just that it's not my truth you just will recognize that in yourself in your emotion in your physical body in your nervous system as your truth and that's my intention to show you that as deep as I possibly can because from there you rebuild your own blueprint. It's not my blueprint, it's your blueprint and you just put words on it and just like, this is what it is. This is, this is what I have done when I felt that. Yeah? So, when you choose, for example, with your hands, because you had this question with somatic, uh, when you choose your hand through your hair, right, mm -hmm. like there, so you are in an action. Mm -hmm. yeah? that sometimes is voluntary or involuntary or by choice or it just happened. And this is somewhere here in your brain, um, I'll use that one. There's somewhere in your brain a certain part that is the so-called the motor cortex. Yeah? And the motor cortex sends impulses in different areas and makes you Whatever, you know, just like you just move limbs and muscles and do different stuff. So um, the, the motor cortex is very important. Sends an impulse into your hand uh, or your body parts, any body part, and we talk more about different body parts, but in this case makes you makes you move. Yeah? Action. And in this case, when you have that apple in your hand, and this is an important piece that I would like to start to do just for a few moments, and most of you have experienced it a few times. When you have that in your hand, and it doesn't matter what it is, yeah? when you sit relaxed, and your shoulders are relaxed, your spine is relaxed, and you have that in your hand, and you just move your, your skin, your hands, your fingers, just slowly over this object, it kind of starts to explore, so you feel different things. So you might feel kind of it's sharp or round or rough or cold. So there are different nerve endings giving you different information, so tactile information. So here comes the key, one of them, this is like the magic keys. When you slow down your speed now, it doesn't matter how fast you go by half, and slow down by half again, you go really, really slowly. Then you find this sparks, there's this tickling electromagnetic little experience there. And when you find that spot somewhere where it just feels that way, it might be between your fingers or fingertips or your palms, and just to stay there and just, just to feel. It doesn't mean anything, it doesn't go anywhere. It's an inside experience that you have. So you move and you experience a sensation there that's very only inside of yourself. And you might notice as well that it can come with certain feelings or sensations in the body or memories or story or with resistance or with just joy you might even feel a turn on somewhere or 
So it doesn't matter what it is, that everything that you explore and feel is welcome there. The important piece is that it has nothing to do with love, with relationship, with sex, with orgasm, or anything else. It's just the pure experience. It's very super simple. It's so simple that the mind can't grasp it. nothing coming back there's no gratification it's just raw pure it's literally built in Notice that it's very familiar, it always has been there. Maybe you have never really noticed. You might notice that it's much easier to find when your eyes are closed. I invite you for a moment to stay in this sensation and open your eyes and let the light in. And stay in that connection there with your skin and see it won't change. Inside outside awareness at the same time. Mm. Okay, and then if your eyes still closed, I invite you to open your eyes and keep them open for a moment. Explain a little bit more. just this few minutes of doing that, that it has brought you in your logical shift, right? Your awareness, your nervous system starts to function differently. Yeah? yeah? So it's, what, what did you notice? What, what are you aware of, of the change? More awake. More awake? Yeah. yeah. Slowing down of the breath. Slow down of the breath. Deeply present. Deeply present. Uh, expansion. Expansion there. Yeah. And 
intensifying of um, pretty much sensations, vibration. So it's mm-hmm. really, really mm-hmm. It felt like I became very warm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm more than this body. Mm-hmm. Meditative aspect. Mm-hmm. Meditative aspect. Mm-hmm. Some people get. Describe it also the when you talk about nervous system and my language is sometimes these. It's just gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's just these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I get more sensitive. I feel in my other parts of the body, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. my arms, skin, and my arm, mm-hmm. like my whole. She has magnification of the senses. Maybe it's very subtle, or maybe you just can't feel really some shifts yet. That's totally fine. Yeah, I can just add that since I work a lot with people with stress and anxiety and social phobia, all these things that are like really like, and they are, oh, I'm supposed to meditate. And, and then they go into like meditation is also a thing that mm. they are like sort of think that they need to achieve. And then they don't do it because I cannot do, meditate as if that was something you need to, mm. that you should do <laughs> or, or like be able to achieve. And then the, the, the touch of them, med- it's like, it takes everyone down in the present moment. And uh, especially when you are like so up in the emotions in the nervous system in the head so it's one one of the most effective uh, meditation to really be in, in that in, in so many ways to, to show people what is possible in just a few minutes mm-hmm. and then they know okay I can meditate mm-hmm. <laughs> so there are different sets you know Everybody is, dif- is experiencing something different. There's no right or wrong, and this is just like we just have different access to that. And some have a lot of practice in that, and some have a little less practice, but it's there we all, because we all have this somatic nervous system. So the, this is what I call the inflow. Yeah? The inflow is super simple. It's just like you have all this kind of nerve endings here in your hands. In your, in your skin, you have that everywhere in your entire body, but you have more in your hands than anywhere in your entire body except your mouth and your genitals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because there is a massive part in the brain dedicated um, to the hands, when the hands will explore that, and that's why it always starts with the hands, when the hand starts to explore that, the rest of the body will follow because it lands in the feeling center. And the feeling center is this other part in the brain, the sensory <laughs> cortex. Yeah? The sensory cortex is sending impulses. Sensory. The, the, the sensory cortex sends impulses to, to, to other parts of the brain. Yeah? But the important piece that the motor and the sensory together is the somatic nervous system. The motor is the movement The sensory is every information from any part of your body that goes into your brain and lands there as an impulse, something, whatever that is. This sensation that you have with this object in your hands feels just absolutely delightful. Would you agree? Yes. (laughs) If you have the same sensation with, you know, I don't know, a spider or a rat or something else that you have a disgust feeling to and you, this, you probably would vomit. Yeah? So, so, so there's a lot of context behind that and we just need to break that down on one point. I don't know how deep I go into that. But 
it's a different thing in your nervous system if you choose this very experience in combination with proximity and connection or with avoidance and with aversion and negativity. Yeah. Because this part of the nervous system is wired in so many different ways and in the first place for example, for a little infant, you know, when you just tell them, don't put your hand on that stove. Just like, okay, I just need to test it. And then <laughs> the hand just like goes up immediately because it's connected to reflexes. And the reflexes there go super fast, not to create a damage in the nerves, uh, on the skin when you have that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if it feels good, you know, when you're just actually in connection and you start feeling that, so it's like, you just want to, it's like merge and melt and go deeper and, and it's just like, whoa, what's that? Yeah. So both of them together, um, they're building the, um, yeah, this somatic um, nervous system. And what happens is when you combine them at the same time, it just creates a an internal loop, an internal feedback loop. And that internal feedback loop has so many benefits. It has so many um, um, positive impacts on the body, on the nervous system. So this little exercise, this is literally the, the top secret. Without this one, without that ingredients, the blueprint won't work because what it does it starts to get conceptual it starts to get you know in the mind it starts to get an idea what is okay but we need to have this physical neurological experience in the first place to know what is happening and it has nothing to do with anybody or anything else no, I, I can talk so deep and more about that, how the nervous system is built when we're born and how we, had in, as infants, creating a bond with our caregiver and so on and so on. But that's the, that's the core function I address. Without that one, it won't work. And you say, sometimes, like you say, it's like the motor action to self-pleasure. How do you, you say that? Yeah, so, so, so the, the idea here is, and thanks for adding that, the idea is you are in action, so your motor, you move towards the felt sense of pleasure. Mm -hmm. And that's the foundation. That's also I want to add to us. So yes. it's a direct, so I'm acting, yeah. my awareness is still... Yeah. So you can call that the. Uh, you can call that the the inflow, or I call that direct direct pleasure. Direct means it just goes direct from your skin into your brain. It goes direct in. There's an indirect path, and I talk about that after dinner. <laughs> this, was, this was probably the longest answer on what somatic is. You got it, like spot on when we were Thank talking about so. it, and then you you it's took the like one that we would be <laughs> after dinner. <laughs> you spotted the one. <laughs> Next one. Mm. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is yeah, I was thinking of Kiwi out here when she, uh, the dog oh. is called Kiwi. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's like laying there, it's getting that massage. And it's like, yeah, how can I like be in this? That's right. Like, yeah, it's beautiful. With more dollars action.
Yeah, you, you know, you, you have different senses connected. So, so there's a part in the brain that calls the medulla oblongata. It's a little uh, kind of a spot where cranial nerves go through. Yeah? Mm. And the first cranial nerve is smell. It's, you know, just like when, when you're an infant, you're born, you just, the, the infant smells the, the breast, the milk. This is where they're just literally crawling after birth. Mm. And, and I think the second one is, I don't know what this, I, I, I don't know. But, but the important piece is that related to touch and senses, this is literally not connected to the medulla oblongata because the, all this kind of cranial nerves that go in there, they're only connected to your face and to your head. Yes, to, to, to hearing, to smelling and seeing and tasting. But the 10th cranial nerve, so there are 10 of them, the 10th cranial nerve is a so-called so vagus nerve activity. And the vagus nerve activity is literally created through touch the so-called myelation of the social development, of the social engagement system. Interesting. Yeah. So, Myelation is like a little coat around something. So, uh -huh. so, so, so myelation is, so, so you have the so-called um, uh, uh, dorsal vagus nerve that goes through the entire body everywhere. It's so-called parasympathetic. And then you have from your diaphragm upwards a myelation around this, like a little fat uh, layer. And this around this the, 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 the parasympathetic nerve. Okay. And this 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 fat layer, this is a so-called myelation, and it's, it's a high speed de de uh, deliverer of information. Uh -huh. And this is starts to get formed. Well, this is theoretically, um, so Stephen Porges and his wife researched that. This is literally formed through the release of oxytocin in the first year of existence, what th all this is based on, you know, what we have done in the first place. Mm. Then the fat is created. The f the, you know, the fat is there already, okay. but through the wiring, through touch and oxytocin and feeling and connection, we're creating our personal... Um, connection with other human beings through just like eye contact and, and just like oh sweet and touch and feel and bond and so this is how it's all built and that's the tenth ones and that is not well you have that as well in the head and everywhere but it's mainly the physical sensual skin related kind of making sense of the world 3d reality how is that bill how does that feel and and, and, and then on one point and i talk more about later how is actually consent and communication built on that, but that's um, would go too far now. Mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for the questions. I, I love, I love mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other question? Mm. It's really interesting um, when you talk about this, because I'm thinking, so I'm so-called, I don't know, it's a label probably, but like neurodivergent. So uh, I've had this experience of getting like almost a brain orgasm by looking at like glittery things, uh, like glitter on the ocean or like shiny like things. Mm. And mm. also through music, some special sounds that like and I go whoop. Mm -hmm. And so I, then I get sometimes stuck in a loop because mm -hmm. I just look at over and over again. So it's really interesting to hear you talk about this, like, ah, yes, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have this. But it's, uh, yeah, I think it's just a good thing, I, I guess. Um, it feels good, but sometimes a bit weird. Or no, not everybody relates to this yeah. kind of experience, yeah. you know? Yeah. So... Yeah, it's, it, it creates this infinite loop, and when you just tap into that together with somebody in this in the right vibration, yeah. you just actually it's, it's created a double infinite loop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the sense sensor. Uh, the the the. 
the sense that also um, touch that is the only sense that goes through the what did you say obligada well, that's the one that does not does not go through the obligada well the 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 sense of touch of your skin doesn't go through the medulla at all. Yeah. yeah. But all the others. All the others, hearing. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's, it's super complex how that is wired in the brain. The different cortexes, they're kind of interconnected. And I don't know even if science has understood that fully, because I haven't. I just try to make my own picture and sense out of that. Um, but there's there's one specific cortex, of course, a parental cortex, mm. where every kind of touch sensation is stored for the rest of our life. Mm. Mm. Every, so every kind of touch sensation. Every t kind of touch sensation. That's how we learn good touch, bad touch. Yeah. Every, that's where I wanted to go, so it depends yeah. what I'm learning. Mm. I'm, I'm yeah, or positive or negative experience, and then, mm -hmm. and and then, that's it. yeah. So, so the, the nervous yeah. system. So that's right. So you could have so someone touches you. So they would then go to the arm ring. So someone touches you. You have a memory of. I'm actually not here. You go back to let's say whatever eight whatever, and you're like. And now you start seeing the vision, the, mm -hmm. the, the picture, I'm in this room and this person touched me. And it's now mirrored into here. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. it. Yeah. And, and the, the important thing is as well that the function of the somatic nervous system is pretty much based on if you're feeling safe mm. in proximity with another person mm. or if you're not feeling not safe. Or there can be anything, you know, uh, uh, a person or a situation. And if you're feeling safe with a person, you automatically move towards it. Yeah. So your action will be going into deeper experience. And if you're not feeling safe or comfortable, your nervous system will automatically go away from it. So you just withdraw from the sensation. So either towards or away from it. So it's always a movement. Yeah, yeah. You're not indifferent. No. And of course, that being safe or not has nothing to do with the other. It's about what's coming up in, in you and what's mm. your old trauma or whatever mm. it was, of course. So it's like, mm. yeah, mm. just not to be confused with knowing something <laughs> mm. about what's actually there. Mm. It could be safe, but you interpret it as something else, mm. depending mm. on what you've been through. So we build on this one. Yeah. So this is the key of this entire thing. I hope this first session was inspiring and you learned what the sensory inflow is all about and how to use it and how to find it. And I hope you practice a lot. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so and uh, get ready for the second session what is all about permission and how to implement that with your partner or in your daily life. It shows up here or here. You choose. Bye.